we have data which is input and output data we have inputs u known we have output measurements coming from the plant and we have the model so we know phi gamma c matrix we have data now you can appreciate that uh, it is sufficient to estimate x not that is state at time 0 because if you have the model if you know the inputs then you know you can u1 x1 x1 and u1 will give you x2 and so on you can just go recursively uh, using this model online to construct subsequent so the key thing is what is the initial state uh, just imagine that you have uh, some real plant okay uh, and then you want to start estimating some variable you are going to start using the model online okay now you have everything the data is coming to you okay why data is you have connected with data equation system so why data is coming to you inputs manipulated inputs are something that operator sets or a controller sets so the computer knows about it okay so now what is not known to me when i want to kick off my state estimator is x not initial state i do not know what is initial state so i have to give a guess okay what should happen is when my model starts running online in parallel with the plant i am going to run the model parallel with the plant in real time okay so k k plus 1 k plus 2 let's say my sampling instant is 1 second okay when the plant advances in time by 1 second the model will advance in time in real time on my computer in 1 second okay now if i want what what i would want ideally model and the plant should you know uh, at some point at least they should they should become identical the model output should become close to the plant output model state should become close to the plant state then only i can use the model as a state estimator otherwise i cannot okay now the problem is when i am using this model online uh, let us take a simple simplest case where d is 0 you have only u there are no unknown inputs so so you are giving this u okay uh, let us assume that measurement noise is 0 there is no disturbance most ideal case even then there is a problem because you do not know x naught okay so so i have a perfect model there is no disturbance i am taking the situation where there is no measurement error okay only possible error now i can commit is in the initial state x naught see because the true plant will have some initial state x naught and i have to guess because x is not measured so i have to give a guess i give a calculated guess i'll give a good guess even then it's a guess okay so when i'm guessing what is the guarantee that the model predictions will be close to the true value okay so just just imagine the scenario this is something different than what we have done earlier earlier we were trying to model the plant now i'm going to run this model online okay in real time so as as time progresses the model also advances in time so model time and the real time are matched okay so i want to estimate this sequence and then you will see that it is sufficient to estimate x not and then we started formulating this problem of estimating x not uh let's assume that x not is the x not hat is the initial guess that you are going to give and you know the input sequence okay you know the input sequence you have the model so i can use x not if i have a guess for x not i can use it to estimate x x hat 1 because i know u not i know gamma i know phi okay so uh, in my computer i advance in time i use i estimate x hat 1 i can estimate x hat 2 x hat 2 will be function of u0 and u1 okay but it is also function of x not okay initial guess initial guess that you make okay also has a influence on how you how you estimate x2 okay you can go on doing this and you can show that actually uh, you know x3 x3 will be function of phi cube x not phi square u not plus there will be a u1 term and u2 term okay so 
with reference to time zero what is going to happen in future okay consists of two components one component which comes because of the inputs that are given after time zero u0 u1 u2 u3 other thing is you know information about the system passed in the system that is x0 okay there are two things which influence how the system behaves uh so how do i find out x0 okay so what i had done last time that i want to estimate x0 using the measurements i have measurements y0 y1 y2 i am taking measurements okay as the time advances i am taking measurements now i want to use these measurements i want to use the model okay and then reconstruct x0 from these measurements and the model okay so i know the inputs my first equation is this c x0 is equal to y0 you might wonder you have this equation why why can't you estimate x0 from this equation what is the trouble not those who have already done a control course others should tell me what is the problem why can't i use this one equation how many states do you measure typically in a real plant i have a distillation column okay i might be having some 10 sensors there are 100 states okay what will be dimension of c matrix c matrix if there are 10 measurements and there are 100 states c will be 10 cross 100 can you solve this equation you cannot there are more unknowns than the number of equations there are 10 equations 100 unknowns you cannot solve this equation you cannot use only one equation see let's take the simplest case cstr problem in the cstr problem we said we have two states what are the two states temperature and concentration what is the measurement temperature okay using one temperature measurement can i estimate concentration and temperature see only i have one equation see i have i have one temperature measurement t0 this is equal to 0 1 this is my c matrix into c a 0 t 0 using this one equation i have just one equation can i estimate can i estimate c a not from one equation i cannot okay so in general the number of measurements are in general very very small compared to number of states in a real plant okay so using one equation two equations you cannot estimate uh x not one equation is not sufficient okay so i can add i have i can use the redundancy in measurements to create more equations okay one is not sufficient i can create two equations three equations four equations okay and then then i can collect enough number of equations so that i can uniquely estimate initial state okay so what i want to do now is i want to collect more equations one equation is not sufficient to estimate x not so i am collecting one more equation i am writing c c x1 is equal to y1 is everyone with me or with this yeah so all that i have done now is i have rearranged it in such a way that unknown part is on the left hand side okay and everything that is known y1 is known to me okay c is known to me gamma is known to me u not is known to me i have just taken it on the right hand side okay so likewise if i go on doing this okay i will get these equations i have just written unknown component on the left hand side i have written known component on the right hand side how many such equations i am going to collect i am going to collect n equations what is n n is equal to number of states in this particular case for cstr problem there are two states i just need two equations okay for a distillation column where there are 100 states and 10 measurements i would need to stack 100 equations okay 
Yeah, we will be coming to that. But before that, I want to, before I do data fitting, okay, where is the need to do data fitting? I will come to that. Right now, there is no error, right? See, I am taking the most ideal situation. Y is error free. Okay, if Y is error free, okay, then I don't want to take more number of equations. This everything is perfect. There are no errors. I just take exact number of equations and solve linear algebraic equations. Okay, that's my that's my game plan right now. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all these equations into one big equation. I'm just going to combine all these equations into one big equations. What is not known to me is this vector x naught. Okay, this this matrix, this matrix is known to me. Okay, I have measurements of y zero, y one up to y n minus one. I know inputs u zero, u one up to u n minus one. So I know all these inputs. Okay, so I can take all the known terms on the right hand side. Okay, and this is like a x equal to b, right? This is an equation which is linear algebraic equation. Okay, what will decide when you can uniquely find x naught? Rank of a matrix, what it should be? Full rank. What will be the dimension of a matrix? If there are if there are ten measurements, if there are ten measurements, okay, and hundred states, what will be the dimension of a matrix? So it will be n r cross n. Okay, you have stacked n equations. Okay, each one of them, there are r see there are r equations corresponding to each out each time time point. You have such stacked n such equations. So there are n r equations. Okay, in n unknowns. So this is a this matrix is not a square matrix. This matrix is not a square matrix. This is a non-square matrix. Okay, in order that you can uniquely find X not rank of this matrix should be equal to n. This is a fundamental condition on the dynamic model, discrete dynamic model. Most ideal situation, no noise, no disturbance, everything is perfect. Model is perfect. I do not know x not. The question is, can I recover x not from the measurements of y and u? Okay, this this. Problem or this question can be fundamentally answered just looking at rank of this matrix. Okay, so this is a property of the linear dynamic model. This is called as observability. Okay, a system is said to be observable provided this this rank is equal to n, equal to system dimension. Okay, so this is one of the fundamental properties of a linear discrete time or You can have a equivalent definition for a continuous time model. This is for the discrete time model. In the continuous time model, you will get c, c a, c a square, c a to the power n minus one. Okay. You can estimate initial state uniquely from the measurements only if, if and only if, this rank is equal to n. If it is not equal to n, whatever you do, you collect more measurements, you do anything, you cannot uniquely estimate. Uniqueness is only guaranteed by this condition. Okay, yeah. PFR. In the case of PFR, you discretize, and then you have large number of states. Still, you will have few measurements. See, I am going to take a PFR uh, uh, example towards the end. Okay, uh, you will discretize it. Let's go to the PFR. Uh, So this is my plug flow reactor, okay. And you know uh, what I would like to know here is the state profile, temperature profile or concentration profile inside the reactor, okay. How many at how many points? Well, if you start by taking number of points, infinite number of points, okay. So actually, see, uh, distillation column is a high dimensional system. This is an infinite dimensional system, okay. But For the practical purpose, one can discretize, okay, and create compartments, pseudo compartments. Even so, 
corresponding to that see there will be we have done this is the model and then you know we had done this compartments of 19 compartments we have done and there are 80 states but we have only 5 temperature measurements the question is can i estimate concentration profile and temperature profile uh, inside the reactor using just 5 temperature measurements okay or 6 temperature measurements now what is critical why this is important is suppose suppose i were to choose see here we have taken 6 temperature measurements the question is are 6 temperature measurements enough to reconstruct the state can i reconstruct 80 states using 6 measurements this is a fundamental question this will depend upon the rank of that particular matrix linearized matrix now how is this relevant it is not just algebraic condition suppose the rank is not equal to n you should add more measurements so that rank of that new matrix so you should change c matrix you should change the number of measurements that you need to uh, obtain to get a unique reconstruction are you getting my point see what is the use of this what is the use of this uh, um, so what is the use of this condition okay suppose you have chosen certain number of measurements for a given system you will get a corresponding c matrix for that okay with that c matrix you actually compute the rank of this c phi and all that you will get you will get rank of this matrix if the rank is not equal to n to make it equal to n you will have to add more measurements okay when you add more measurements structure of c matrix will change okay so when should you stop how many measurements to be added see this is a fundamental question when i have a plant which has large number of states how many measurements i need to have to unique to be able to uniquely reconstruct the state you can add more if you want but what is the minimum number you should make sure that this rank condition is met okay suppose you have a c matrix in which you know you 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 add more measurements such that this condition is met is not a problem but if you add less and this becomes rank deficient you cannot estimate the state uniquely this is what you have to remember okay so this is this is a something this is a tool which can be used at a design of a sensor network very very important tool when you design a sensor network how do you choose how many minimum number of sensors are required to estimate the state uniquely that is the fundamental question that can be answered for linear dynamic models that can be answered using analytical tools linear algebra okay so your linear algebra understanding is deeply linked with how do you design your sensor network okay so this is called as observability matrix and this is one of the fundamental properties of the system now let's go back to our for, to our uh, cstr example this was my phi okay i wanted to estimate uh, concentration using temperature so my c matrix is this okay in the state the second state is temperature first state is concentration so uh, if i construct this matrix c and c phi what is n n is equal to 2 okay look at this matrix it should be c c phi up to c phi to the power n minus 1 when there are two states you just need you know you just need two things okay rank of this matrix is 2 which means you are guaranteed to get estimates of concentration just from temperature measurements okay just from temperature measurement you are guaranteed to get uh, so uh, this is a fundamental property of the linear dynamic model okay so this system is observable and then i am just showing you one particular example if i my initial state is 0.1 uh, and 1 and you know u0 is this then you can uniquely estimate uh, uh, these are all uh, dimensionless uh, variables uh, so you can uniquely estimate uh, it's not just solving two linear algebraic equations you can recover whatever you want to uh, it's not a problem okay now let's go back to the quadruple tank model okay quadruple tank model we had four states right four levels there are two inputs and there are two measurements only two question is can i reconstruct all four can i estimate all four levels 
using only two level measurements okay this is the first question that i should answer so these are my matrices phi matrix is this gamma matrix is here this we had done earlier when we did linearization and if i actually see now my observability matrix what is n is 4 okay so i have to check c c5 c5 square okay uh, in matlab there is a command called obsv observability obsv okay you just give phi matrix and c matrix it will reconstruct this whole matrix and give you back it will stack and it will give you back uh, these this this matrix so you can check the rank for this particular matrix the rank happens to be 4 which means i can fundamentally estimate you can do an experiment here you just try what happens if you take only one level measurement out of 4 and see whether the rank comes out to be 4 can you estimate all four states just using one level measurements why do you want to make such decisions well level measurement costs each level measurement is 50000 okay so i want to add minimal number of level sensors why should i add too many right that is where i need to decide what is the minimum number so if i put two i get this rank to be four which means i can estimate so i am guaranteed okay so this is the most ideal scenario no noise only error is in the initial state okay let's slowly start relaxing these conditions one by one okay now what if there are errors in the measurement next question see this perfect recovery of perfect recovery was possible because there were no errors in the measurement okay so only error was only thing that was unknown was x naught but if there was an erroneous measurement then you cannot use just n equations and solve okay then you have to pose the problem as a least squares problem what is the best estimate that can you can construct because every measurement has an error okay so then i cannot just go back and use n equations because if i used you know for the cstr problem if there is error in the measurement if you use first two equations you will get one estimate of x x naught if you use next two equations you will get another estimate you use third equation you will get third estimate that is because there are errors in the measurement measurements are not perfect and that is the reality every time you never get a perfect measurement you always get uh, erroneous measurements so what if y is something like this y true plus some error okay uh, and this is my measurement noise then what you are saying should be done you know we should collect more number of measurements and then try to consider least square estimate of x naught okay that is the best way of going about so what we can do here is we can minimize some of the square of errors okay what is done here is uh, v is a uh, vector of measurement errors r is covariance of this measurement errors i am just normalizing these errors using covariance inverse okay i am normalizing this errors with covariance inverse i do not know the true value of y that is the problem i only have the measurement measured value of y so i can only construct the best estimate okay you will never know in this case but this is a model proposed what is the model true plus error okay now if you have if now we can look at v as a stochastic process we can say it's a white noise a zero mean white noise with some covariance covariance r okay in that case what i can do is now here i am trying to construct an objective function which is sum of the square of errors okay let me just write down this what is this see this vk okay uh, is let's assume it to be a white noise okay suppose there are three sensors okay there are three sensors then i will say that covariance of vk sigma 1 square 0 0 0 sigma 2 square sigma 3 square 
let us assume that VK is a white noise, okay, such that expected value of VK is equal to 0, expected value of VK is equal to 0, okay, and, and each one of them has variance equal to sigma i square, okay. So, what will be this matrix? See, this is my Q, this is my R matrix. What will be R inverse? 1 by sigma 1 square, 1 by sigma 2 square, 1 by sigma 3 square, 0, 0, right? Okay. And what will be this? VK transpose R inverse VK. This will be, just check this. VK1 first component square by sigma 1 square plus uh, VK2 square by sigma 2 square plus VK3 square by sigma 3 square. So, what am I doing here? I am normalizing each one of the errors using its own standard deviation or variance. Okay. Why, why this kind of a thing is done? That is because each measurement may have different accuracy. Also, each, me each measurement might be different type. You know, you may have pressure measurement, level measurement. See, V1 could be pressure measurement, V2 could be level measurement, V3 could be temperature measurement and they have different units, different variability. So, I want to minimize, I want to minimize some kind of normalized objective function and that is the reason I use this information of variance, I use this information of variance to normalize my objective function. It should not happen that one, one of these variables because of its numerically large value, it should not dominate my objective, my optimization problem, okay. That is why I need some kind of normalization and that is why I am using information about the variance, okay. Remember, we are again revisiting stochastic processes here. VK is modeled as a stochastic process, 0 mean white noise, 0 mean white noise with covariance equal to R. It is a model proposed for measurement errors, okay. White noise means random error, okay. You can, if you want distribution, you can say normally distributed random error, okay. And then you are using that to normalize your objective function. Now, you can solve this problem as a least square estimation problem. That means, I want to, I want to estimate x hat naught, okay, subject to this equation. If you look at here, what I have done is this part actually, this part comes from here. This part comes from here. I have written y at any time k in terms of y k minus u, okay. That is what I have done. I have just used that particular information. So, this kind of recur recursive relationship I have used and then I have come to this, okay. I have just expressed my y, I have just expressed my y true in terms of initial guess for x naught and all the known inputs. That is all I have done. Are you, are you clear about this? y true is if See, if you knew x hat true, y true will be obtained through the model equations, right? Model is giving this y true, giving an estimate of y true. Actually, when you get data, you will never come to know what is y true. You will only, data will only give you y true plus error because you they will never come to know. You can only estimate error, you can only estimate y true, okay? We will actually uh, talk about this more detail. You can only say that statistically, you know, uh, if you collect large number of samples, you might approach the truth. You will never be able to recover from a sample the truth, okay. This difference is nothing but y k minus y true k. y true k is expressed using the model equations, recursive use of model equations. But the model y true will depend upon x naught and u and I have shown you that, okay. So, I am just using it as a constant optimization problem. Yeah. 
no no jumping right now model is perfect what happens to model mismatch will see you don't ask a question in the 10th standard when you start looking at a first standard okay suppose there is no model mismatch right now yeah usually it is the case usually the measurement noise is white i can show you lab data i showed you one lab data you go back and look at temperature data which i have put in the system identification notes hmm. each one of them will have a white noise if errors in the measurement are arising from see the fundamentally uh, when you have a randomness coming from large number of sources each having a dis different distribution the the random error that occurs tends to be with a random noise with gaussian distribution this is central limit theorem okay so when you have a measurement noise it is arising from large number of things electrical fluctuations conversion error between analog to digital you know it's something it is picking up on the way transmission line disturbances everything put together what you get is a random disturbance which is like gaussian in fact it turns out to be gaussian white noise measurement noise gaussian white noise model is many times more than sufficient for large number of cases there might be some 5% cases which are pathological but we are right now worried about 95% of the cases which are you know measurement noise is not you take sensors put them uh, with uh, this thing to be at constant uh, this thing measure it you can estimate if you know i i am taking temperature measurement i can independently estimate what is the temperature inside the tank and then i can take the measurements find out the difference i'll get the error i can get an estimate there are different ways of doing it it's not you can any other doubt okay now this particular formulation even though it appears it is quite logical to go this way it is inconvenient what will happen if you start using this online the size of the problem will start growing okay see because because as time advances you have 100 measurements 101 measurements 102 measurements so you go on starting a problem which is of increasing size okay and where do you stop how many you take from from the square estimation theory you know you know that you take more measurements better it is okay but increasing solving this problem with more and more number of measurements as time progresses if you want to solve this every time it's not convenient so you need some better ways of doing this okay so that's why we are going to look at so called recursive estimators okay so anyway i'll just give you an example before i move on let's say uh, uh, you have this uh, five measurements which are uh, uh, you know uh, or six temperature measurements which are noisy then you will get a least square estimator uh, estimate you will not be able to recover the exact truth you will be going close to the truth so you get here 0.1 and 0.924 so uh, the main problem with using this kind of a thing this is just a demonstration uh, using a batch of five data points but five will become six six will become seven in the real time if you want to use this optimization formulation it is not practical so you need some other way of doing it okay uh, okay so i want a recursive estimator i want a recursive estimator okay so what i am going to do is i am going to run my model online okay whatever input that goes to the plant i am going to feed it to my model okay and so this is the true process this is the true process okay and this is my estimator which is running in my computer online okay so when the process starts at the same time i start running my model in parallel on the computer okay whatever input goes to the plant i am giving it to my model okay now let's ask the first question that uh, i forget about all that optimization formulation and all that i am using this observer let me call this as an estimator what i am doing is i am just feeding in whatever u that goes to the plant i give it to the model okay will the question is will this xk tend to x true 
will it tend to extrude okay uh, i have given a guess for x not i have given a guess, guess for x not so initially at least for some time the way this is behaving and way this is behaving is going to be different eventually i want it to merge okay let's see whether it happens online okay so what is the error just just find out the error just go back and find out this error what is the dynamics of this error subtract the two equations just see what you get subtract subtract equation 2 from equation 1 subtract equation 2 from equation 1 what do you get pardon me not why right now i am just asking you to subtract 2 from 1 i am just asking you to subtract 2 from 1 okay so if i subtract only the state dynamics okay i am defining this error x true minus x hat okay this is my error then i get this difference equation i get this difference equation linear difference equation and is everyone comfortable with this you know at time k if you just repeatedly use this difference equation you will get this solution okay under what condition error will go to zero if eigen values of phi are inside the unit circle if eigen values of phi are inside the unit circle if you are running the model in parallel to the plant after some time even if you are given initial guess wrong okay the error will go to zero asymptotically okay error will go to zero asymptotically so so this is very very critical but what happens if plant is marginally stable or unstable there are many situations where plant is not exactly stable then this idea of running the model in parallel to the plant will not work okay this idea of running the model you need to do something else okay you need to make sure that um, so you cannot use this idea for marginally stable or unstable systems okay this simplistic idea will work only in the neighborhood of a point where the system has stable dynamics okay so uh what about the fact how fast or how slowly this will converge see it might take long time to converge i want convergence to occur quickly i want to start watching what is happening see my startup of the plant is a critical phase i don't want to wait for a long time till my error converges and i start see getting an estimate of what is happening inside i want a quick estimate so i should somehow make it happen faster what is the way way out okay so we design what is called as a closed loop observer whatever we have done till now running the model parallel to the plant i am going to call it open loop observer okay i am going to use some feedback information i am going to give a feedback from the measurements of y to my estimator okay and then accelerate the convergence that's what i want to do okay so the idea is this i have a measurement see i am estimating states using my model which is running in parallel to the plant okay process is running okay i get measurement yk i can estimate what would be yk okay i can find the difference between the two and use it as a feedback correction so this error between y measured and y estimated this is called as innovation this innovation is used to correct the estimator so i can use this idea of feedback to stabilize or to make the dynamics faster in control why do you use a controller what is the reason you use a controller one two one of the reasons why you use controller is because see suppose you were to do things in open loop okay uh, plant is stable and you want to take the system from one state to the other state in open loop you give some change it will take its own time sweet time to reach that okay i don't want that to happen i want to take it to a new state very quickly okay that's where the controller plays a role in doing it fast that's why you design a controller which is optimal which takes it fast and so on so one of the reason why you put a controller is to alter the dynamics 
you want to make it fast you want to make it slow you want to meddle with the dynamics same thing i want to do here i want to meddle with the estimator dynamics that's why i'm going to put a feedback what is done in feedback control you put a feedback loop and you manipulate other reason why you put a feedback controller is plant is open loop unstable you put a feedback loop and you can stabilize it all of you know this right you can stabilize a plant using feedback loop you can alter the poles you can alter the closed loop dynamics and make it faster or slower using same idea is going to be used in observer design okay so what is going to be my strategy so my observer now is going to have one more term here okay i am adding one more term here lab l times ek what is ek ek is y measured minus y estimated y hat k is everyone with me on this y hat k is c times x hat k okay y measured if i use this what is l l is a gain just like proportional gain which you use in the feedback control loop this is a gain matrix i am going to use this gain matrix to tweak the stability or performance of the observer okay so this is a feedback correction this is estimation error it is also sometimes called innovation okay uh the process is still like this okay we are taking the deterministic case right now i am still working with no noise okay no disturbances perfect measurements i am i want to use this scenario now uh what i should do is how does the error behave now i have added one more thing here okay what is the dynamics of the error can you derive this subtract this equation from this equation just find out the state dynamics what is it what is the new state dynamics just remember that this y can be written as cx y can be written as cx okay when you subtract from this equation this estimator equation uk term will cancel just try just try just try doing it you won't understand unless you work it out i will show you the result what is the estimation error dynamics yeah you can put any control there how do you choose that l matrix is going to be the you know how do i now next few lectures are just devoted to the uh you know problem of how do i optimally choose l okay so that i can influence the dynamics that is the that is the uh you know that is what we are going to look at for next four lectures first of all pid controller now you forget about pid controller. we are now talking about general state feedback controller so l is some gain matrix it could be mimo it need not be pid single input single output i am not any longer worried about single input single output l is a gain matrix which could be non square and typically what is the dimension of l matrix tell me x is the number of states okay y is number of measurements what is the dimension of l matrix number of states cross number of measurements if there are 100 states and 10 measurements l will be a 100 cross 10 matrix okay for the reactor l will be a 2 cross 1 because there are two states one measurement okay so i have to i have to find out if it if there are 100 states and 10 measurements i have to find out 100 cross 10 elements it is not same as designing a pid controller where there are three parameters okay i have to work with uh, 100 cross 10 i have to estimate 100 cross 10 elements so it's more much more complex problem than pid controller design yeah but uh, right now we will not worry about it so so again you know don't jump 
just understand basics first then you can talk about derivatives what is the equation pi minus lc okay so you should get if i do if i define estimation error like this then i get this error equation that is error at time k plus 1 will be function of error at time k through this coupling matrix plus lc okay now what is the difference between the previous case and this case now in open loop i didn't have any handle on how fast error changes now i have a handle to enhance the rate of convergence what is that handle i can choose l matrix okay how should i choose l matrix what should be the primary criteria eigen values of phi minus lc should be inside the unit circle what can you say if eigen values are close to 1 if they are all the eigen values are close to 1 it will be slow it will it will take longer time for the error to go to 0 what if the eigen values are close to 0 it will converge faster so you have a choice now you have a choice and you should be able to dictate the speed of convergence by appropriate choice of l okay also there is one more thing if phi has phi is open loop unstable okay i can choose phi minus lc to be inside unit circle so that even if the plant is unstable okay this observer will not be unstable observer will be stable okay you will get uh, estimated states to be uh, uh, you know the error between the true and the uh, estimate will asymptotically go to zero even if the plant is unstable that is what you can guarantee through the choice of this matrix okay yeah what is large l Yeah, yeah. So here you want the error to come to uh, this thing very fast. It may have some influence on how the closed loop behaves. That uh, yeah. Not unstable, unstable phi. Right hand poles. No, if it is. No, no, but I am choosing L, no, I will never let, I will never let a choice of L such that its eigenvalues are outside unit circle, Pi nil potent, huh. no, no, but why you are only worried about degenerate cases right now, that is a degenerate case, fine, so I can talk about fixes for those cases, but not when you are not in 101 right if you have that problem we can discuss that later okay what do you do for nil potent uh, phi uh, so in general for a normal phi which is either stable or unstable if it is stable you can enhance the rate of convergence if it is unstable uh, you can so you are talking about things like which are detectable but not observable so there are so many niceties which i am not going to talk in the, the first time introducing this concept right okay so so this is my this is my first criteria i want eigen values of phi minus lc to be inside the unit circle okay and if that happens then uh, error will go to zero now what is very very important is that the error will go to zero if you choose l such that this condition is satisfied okay error will go to zero irrespective of what is the initial guess that you give you make a completely wrong guess does not matter okay as long as this condition is satisfied whatever initial guess you give error will go to 0 after some time how fast how slowly will this decide upon what is this what is the Eigen values that you choose okay choice of Eigen values will decide the rate of convergence of okay so this is this last 
last thing is very very important irrespective of choice of x0 it will go to 0 okay so my problem is how do i choose how do i choose this l matrix okay such that it has desired pole locations okay so i am going to pre this is a design problem now i am going to specify where the poles of phi minus lc should lie and i want to back calculate l okay i know i know phi i know l okay sorry i know c i know c i do not know l i want to estimate i want to estimate l given the poles given the poles okay uh question is when can you do that okay now uh if you specify poles of a system how many poles you can specify n what is the dimension of this matrix phi minus lc what is the dimension of just write down what is the dimension of phi matrix n cross n there are n states what is the dimension of what is the dimension of l matrix n cross if there are r measurements n cross r and what is the dimension of c matrix r cross r cross n okay so what is the dimension of this matrix phi minus lc n by n it's a n by n matrix how many eigen values it has it has n eigen values okay so if you specify n eigen values how many equations you are giving n equations okay in general how many elements l will have n by r there are n by r elements of l and you are just giving n equations right can you solve it when can you solve it uniquely r is equal to he is saying r is equal to 1 do you agree when can you solve uniquely unique way of number of equations equal to number of unknowns okay when will it happen r is equal to 1 when only one measurement is there you have n equations okay r will have there is only one measurement matrix l will be n cross 1 okay be n cross 1 and then you can you have n equations in n unknowns you can solve it uniquely and you can get uh, okay so how do you choose this poles is a very uh, difficult question because if you uh if you uh choose them very close to zero your uh you know observer brings error very close to zero very quickly provided there are no errors in the measurement there are no disturbances if there are errors in the measurement okay then a observer which is trying to bring uh the the observation error very close to zero very quickly okay can give you trouble okay so when there are errors in the measurement how do you choose what should be the pole locations is not an easy task but nevertheless let's look at this uh problem of estimating the states the choice of poles is not a very trivial thing but now let's look at it as a mathematical problem because why why one re, uh, why we are doing to do this is because it's one of the fundamental ideas in control observer design by pole placement uh and even though uh, it might be difficult to use many times in practice um it still marks a very important landmark in the development of uh, observers okay so how do you choose the poles is is a question that we'll keep it aside for the time being let's say we have some way of choosing the poles i'm going to say well i know that uh, placing the poles close to one will make it very slow keeping them 
close to zero will make it very fast but my uh, it might be sensitive to noise let's take a choice we want to put it at 0 0.5 neither at this end nor at that end okay so we are going to make it uh, place all the poles at 0 0.5 0 0.6 somewhere in between so we have some way of choosing the poles and now the question is how do i design the observer okay so let me let me just go back here for a moment and then okay so this phi minus lc so this is this is n cross n this is uh, n cross r and this is r cross n so together this is n cross n so this whole matrix is n cross n okay the next thing is that l is a n cross r matrix okay so you know so this will be say l 1 1 1 2 l 1 n l uh, oh sorry l uh, n 1 l n 1 this is 2 1 this is l 2 1 this is l n 1 l uh, 1 2 l 2 2 n 2 and so on and so you will get l uh, 1 r up to l n r okay there are so many unknowns there are so many unknowns in this matrix okay and what i am going to do is i am going to say that phi minus lc so uh, i am going to put uh, zi minus okay let me move to the other uh, paper i am going to i am going to say that determinant of say zi minus phi minus lc equal to 0 okay this is the characteristic equation this is the characteristic equation okay and i am going to specify poles of this i am going to specify roots of this okay how many roots i can specify i can specify only n roots this is a nth order polynomial i can only specify n roots okay so let's say i am going to say that roots of this are at z1 is equal to p1 z2 is equal to p2 and so on i am going to give some pole locations say 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 simplest choice let's let's take a very simple choice neither 0 nor 1 somewhere in between okay i have given this choice okay if i give this choice okay if i give this choice and if i write the equations this poles of this or the characteristic equation here will be function of this l right so this will be function of l11 l12 l13 and so on right so it will be some very complex function of l11 l12 and i can i can do a very you know crude job of actually expressing this in terms of l11 l12 finding out its eigen values and saying it equal to p1 equal to p2 okay if i do it very crudely okay it can become very very difficult the question is if i want to specify the poles okay of this matrix to be equal to p1 p2 p3 p4 okay can i do some elegant algebra okay can i do some elegant algebra such that i can do it easily i don't want to i don't want to actually sit and solve this equation i'll get some very complex function of l1 l11 l12 l13 and all that okay and then equating and solving those coupled equation can become very messy okay if you try to do it for a general n, n dimensional case okay it can become very very messy if you actually solve this equation raw form okay so i want to do some very nice linear algebra such that i don't have to sit and solve this equation by hand okay so what is this elegant algebra that that you want to do 
is is everyone with me on this is there any doubt here what i want to do i want to choose elements of l such that the poles of this roots of this equation are equal to you cannot even write roots of this equation analytically can you write you cannot write analytical expressions for that okay so saying that it is equal to something and solving it is very difficult okay if you just try to do it as a raw problem okay it will be very difficult to even formulate and solve this problem as a raw problem of equating uh, you know poles finding out l11 l12 l13 and all that so it is not it is not very easy to do this if you just think it in a uh, raw form okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a variable transformation this is where linear algebra will help me okay so i'm going to do a variable transformation i'm going to transform from x to a new state variable neta okay first of all i am assuming that there is only one measurement okay if there is one measurement then l matrix has only n unknowns okay l matrix is a vector n cross 1 vector okay i want to estimate elements of this vector okay so this is my model this is my original model okay and this is the transfer function right now i am going to use the trick of some time back we talked about some canonical forms do you remember canonical forms controllable canonical form observable canonical form we talked about those canonical forms right i am going to convert this model into the canonical form how do you convert into canonical form if you look at if you look at the transfer function you can write the canonical form what is the advantage of canonical form the advantage of canonical form is that the the characteristic polynomial coefficients appear as the first column right the characteristic polynomial will appear as the first column okay see this kind of a nice thing is not available when i have general phi right when i transform it into this particular form okay when i transform it into this particular form i get a1 a2 lined up on the first column then this part is 1 0 0 0 1 okay so so i am going to use this particular form to simplify my pole placement pole placement means i want to choose l1 l2 l3 l4 observer gain in such a way that the error dynamics has poles at a desired location okay so instead of working with this i am going to work with this transformation okay so my trick is going to be like this i start from here i transform it into this form these are interconvertible we know that okay these two are forms are interconvertible so this is only a different way of representing the system okay i am going to design an observer for this system okay and then these two are related through this transformation so i am going to come back and uh, from the transform domain i am going to come back to the original domain and use that observer okay that is going to be the trick is everyone with me on this this transformation this we have done earlier in the class uh only thing is in a different context i am now now the question is how do you go from here to here okay i'll answer that question right now just wait for 5 minutes to come to that point okay so my design procedure is like this i want to transform the model to the observable canonical form once i do that design a observer for the transform model okay and then express the observer in the original state space model using the inverse transformation so transform the problem design the observer do inverse transformation okay that is a trick why you can do this you know linear algebra allows you to play with the model in the model space you can do all kinds of things when you have uh, you know a linear difference difference equation model okay so let's see what we are going to do this is my transformed observer 
this is my transformed observer i am designing an observer for the transformed system okay can you derive this equation can you see whether you can derive this equation just go back just go back here just go back here and try to design the observer equation for this just 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 go back and check what will be what will be phi a minus c a see understand what i am doing what i am doing is i am first transforming this to this form okay and then i am going to design an observer in the transform domain okay i have to design an observer in the transform domain can you derive this matrix just check can you derive this matrix how will you get this matrix what is c for this particular system for the transform system c c a happens to be 1000 it's very nice okay so see my transform system is and then i want to design an observer which is i want to design an observer like this okay i want to design an observer like this observer will be in the transform domain okay what is this l it is only the dimension of y is only one there is only one measurement okay what will be dimension of l l will be n cross 1 okay so for the transform domain phi a minus l c a is nothing but phi a minus what is l l will be l1 l2 up to ln what is c 1 0 0 okay and what is this phi a phi a is minus a1 minus a2 minus an 1 0 0 0 1 and so on okay we are working in a transform domain transform domain this transform phi is very nice only one column only one column is there which corresponds to the characteristic equation itself all the other elements are 0 and 1 okay the transform model is very very nice looking okay so now when i take subtract this from this see what is multiplication of this what will you get see this will be this will be just l1 l2 ln 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 right it's a special form and that's why you get this in the transform domain okay now now what do you what is the advantage can you tell me from here what does the column signify poles of the what is the column in observable canonical form what does the column signify coefficient of the cartesian equation of which which cartesian equation
So, the Carretis equation of Z i minus L C A minus Phi A. Okay, or Phi A minus whatever positive negative. Uh, okay, for the transform part, for the transform part, the first column will actually tell you. First column will actually give you the characteristic equation for the closed loop directly. Just looking at this, you can tell what is the characteristic equation of the closed loop. Okay. So, this is my characteristic equation. I can just look at this form and write the characteristic equation, which is very nice. Okay. And then I will just say that my, my closed loop should be equal to. Okay. Specifying poles is equivalent to specifying another characteristic equation. So, I am going to say that this characteristic equation should be equal to design characteristic equation. This, this is my design characteristic equation. Okay. This has the poles at location where I want. I am just going to equate the coefficients of this and this. Okay. If I equate the coefficients, I get the design for the observer. So, if I just equate the coefficients, okay, I will get. So, this polynomial is what I have specified. It has roots at a desired location where I want. This is the transform polynomial. I just equate the coefficient. I get the observer designed in the transform domain. Okay, I have designed the observer in the transform domain. So, I should come back to the original domain. I have gone from x to neta. I have designed the observer for neta. I should recover. I should recover. There is one more thing which we have seen earlier. Variable transformation, it does not change poles. We have seen this earlier. I have shown this in the while developing state space models. Just go back and look at what we have done in the state realization part. Okay, everything that we have done has a relevance. Okay, just it's not done without purpose. If you if you design in a transform domain and come back to the original domain, the poles don't change. Okay, the form changes. It's not that the fundamental characteristic changes when you transform. So, I am going to design the observer in the transform domain and then I am just going to come back to the original domain using the transformation matrix T. Now, the question is how do you get this T? Okay, not very difficult. T is just multiplication of you know two observability matrices. You take the observability matrix which is original, you take the observability matrix for the transform system and inverse of this times original observability matrix gives me the transformation matrix. Okay. Uh, this derivation is very simple. I am just leaving it to you. I am not uh, doing this derivation. It is very, very simple. You can just show that observability matrix of uh, the transformation can be obtained through observability matrix. Well, you know, see you are given the system. So, you know C, you know C phi, you know everything here. Do you know this? Do you know this matrix? You know this matrix also because you have transformed. See, you are able to transform, and you know what is the characteristic equation. See, this C, C A, and Phi A has specially very simple form. What is the simple form for Phi A and C A? Phi A is just find a transfer function, write the coefficients of the denominator here, write 1 0 0. Okay, what is C here? 1 0 0. So, this is once you find from here to here, writing this form is very, very easy, not at all difficult. Okay. So, for this mat system, if you want to find out the observability matrix, it is very easy. Okay. You just you can just look, you can just find a transfer function, construct this form, write the observability matrix. You are given phi and c. Finding the observability matrix for this system is very easy, it is not difficult. Okay. So, finding the transformation matrix is but then this particular equation has a very, very important message. It also tells you that you can do this transformation only when the observability matrix is invertible or it has rank n. Okay. Uh, so, observability and ability to place the poles at any location are linked. You can place the poles of the observer at any location you want provided the system is observable. Otherwise, you cannot do it. Okay. So, these are deeply linked concept. Observability is not just a mathematical idea which we try to okay so if this is equal to n 
you are guaranteed that you can place the poles at wherever you want okay i'll just go to the cstr example um we have this system okay uh i converted this into the observable canonical form okay i can convert this into observable canonical form uh formula for doing this i have already given you t matrix t matrix is constructed in a particular way you can construct t matrix without any difficulty once you find a transfer function for the system you convert this into observable canonical form you place the poles okay in the transform domain okay and recover the observer in the original domain okay so just to summarize okay so we started from we started from x k plus 1 is equal to 5 xk plus gamma uk and yk is equal to cxk we transform this to neta xk is equal to 5 a neta k plus gamma uk yk is equal to c neta k then we designed an observer for neta hat k okay we designed an observer for neta hat k okay by placing poles for of phi a minus oh sorry this is ca and this is gamma a these are transformed so phi a minus l let's call this l a C A. We place the poles. We place the poles of this matrix, okay? And we designed this L A, and then from this we recover L in. okay so we found out this la from la we can recover l okay and the fact that if you move from one transformation to other transformation it doesn't change the eigen value helps you in making sure that even if you have placed the poles of this okay that ensures that this system also error dynamics will have same poles because transforming variables doesn't change the pole locations that is the fundamental idea okay so that is how that is how this 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 thing works okay so here i have gone to the transform domain i have gone to the transform domain in the transform domain i do the pole placement do the observer and i come back and find out recover t using t i recover my observer in the original domain i don't want to work with the transform domain i want to work with x1 x2 ultimately i want to estimate concentration see here x has a physical meaning concentration and temperature in the transform domain physical meaning is lost okay but it is convenient to do design so i design in the transform domain and come back to the original domain because i want to ultimately talk not in terms of neta 1 neta 2 i want to observe for temperature and concentration that's why i come back okay how good is this observer i am just comparing the open loop observer no l with l okay for this Uh, reactor problem this is the open loop observer no no l after some time obviously you know this estimate and the truth converges okay open loop stable system no problem okay i want to make it fast by pole placement okay the error convergence is like this if i if i put poles at 0.5 oh yeah this is a demonstration here look here this is open loop observer there is a mismatch between the initial true state and the estimated state okay uh, the true state is this black line estimated state is this plus 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 open loop observer open loop stable system after some time error between this will go to zero okay it is not fast enough i don't want to wait for you know 10 minutes or 5 minutes for this to occur 
okay i want the error conversions very fast what if i design this is the error dynamics between true and uh, estimated it goes like this what if i design an observer pole placement leonberger observer at 0.5 why it is called leonberger observer because leonberger developed this whole theory one of the grand old man of control theory uh, so just look at here okay if i place the poles at 0.5 i am able to take error to zero very very fast okay how fast just two three samples this this figures speak for themselves okay you place the poles error goes to zero very fast okay and you are able to use the observer online for estimating the concentration okay using the so this is my this is my estimated concentration this is my estimated concentration plus 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 using open loop observer this is my estimated concentration in reality you will never know the truth but what i know is that estimate of the concentration goes to the true value very quickly in this particular case using leonberger observer okay so that is how uh, i can control the error dynamics by placing the poles so we'll continue this right now we have not looked at noise we have not looked at disturbances and the life is going to be more complex when we start looking at noise and disturbances okay so please bring the notes because the next three lectures i'm going to talk about the celebrated kalman filter okay it is difficult okay to understand so please bring the notes you will need those notes to make extra 